Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Longhorn Weekly live from Pluckers, the West Campus location here in Austin. Now, because we had the open date on the schedule last week for the Longhorn football team and head coach Tom Herman is with us during the open date, this being the abbreviated uh, uh, compartmentalized shorter week, uh, Coach Herman's taking the opportunity to get his team ready for the game. It's on Thursday night, so it's two days earlier. So we always do the, uh, for, as we say, from uh, clearing the pallet thing and have the opportunity to visit with a couple other Texas coaches as well. How about a round of applause for Texas volleyball coach Jared Elliott, who's with us here. At Pluckers to lead off the program. Good to see you. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. And uh, you come off a uh, Big 12 Conference opening match win over West Virginia. Always good to get conference play off to a good start, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we've historically we haven't been great up there, and uh, we had a battle. And uh, you know, really proud of our, our team for for coming back in the way they did and the character they showed. And um, our conference is getting so much better, so there's no nights off for us. You know, one thing that, that struck me I thought was very interesting, at, at the start of the year, uh, folks looked at your club, and rightly so, and said, this is going to be one of the best teams in the country, if not the best team in the country, number one or number two or whatever, uh, depending on the polls and, and the expectations. And he had a couple early season losses to teams that are in the top three in the country in uh, Minnesota and Florida. Very, very good club. So how do you as a coach, and I, and I know you've been down this road many, many times in the past uh, with, with your staff, when you look back and evaluate the caliber of opposition uh, in, that, in that being directly proportional to how you felt your team played then, to now and how you evaluate all that now that you're in the conference play yeah you know there's a lot more mathematics that go into our sport you know we're statistically taking every contact and learning a lot about our team so when we play those teams we learn a lot about ourselves in terms of where we need to improve what areas we can focus on and how we kind of go about our business you know historically we have not been very good at this time of the year um, and kind of gradually we've gotten better uh, I feel like right now we're still not a great unit we, we have spurts of uh, good periods of time but um, we're learning about our squad and, and, and trying to kind of get them to um, be cohesive. And, and with this sport, the way how competitive it is, you know, you don't get nights off. But uh, we've got the pieces to be great. Uh, we've got to clean up some of the ball control touches that we have. If we can get, get that going at a, at a much higher level and are serving, uh, then things can turn off for the, uh, the better. You know, we're not far off. Um, but we're not there yet, and uh, the good news is we have some time to kind of be improving during this time. We've had the conversation before about uh, playing the, the grueling non-conference schedule that you play, and maybe you don't get off to quite the, as fast a start as some folks hope, think, expect, whatever the, the occasion might be. But it sounds like it's something that you and the staff and really the returning players, it's like, we got this. We can deal with this. We understand we can be a little bit better, but it's not a road that's completely unfamiliar to you. Yeah, exactly. I think the hard part about the sport of volleyball is you only have two weeks to train, and there's about 20 to 30 systems that you got to get in place, and you can't get them all in, in place during the preseason. And when you play that level of competition, you can't change a lot of things from week to week. So, you know, since that conference, so we had a couple of weeks, so we've been working on some things offensively. We've been working on some things defensively, and we've gotten a little bit better. But, um, you know, it's, it, it takes us time. We, we like to study our team and know about how we go about it. You know, the team... There's always urgency for them, and they're always questioning themselves at this time of the year, and we go back and re <laughs> revisit you know, the previous years of what, what struggles we've gone through. Um, but we've got great buy-in from our kids. We've got a great leadership group, and uh, you know, hopefully we can kind of keep getting better over this, year, the, this period of time. But you know, with our conference the way it is, uh, we've got to show up every single night. Do you uh, – we always hear the old coaching adage, no matter the sport, football, volleyball, soccer, basketball, baseball, whatever it is, that the best – coach teams are the ones where the players are doing a lot of the coaching so to speak the leadership as you talk about there do you find that that your leaders on your team are telling some of the younger players you know don't panic over this this is where we we have had a bump or two in the past but we'll get there here's how we do it the road that, that we take and here's the work that we put in to get that done yeah, I think it's uh, it's real simple. It's uh, It goes back to hard work beats talent. And so we've got a lot of talent, and we've got to get them to that point where they're 100% bought into what they're doing. We've got some players doing it on some nights and other players doing it on other nights. And we've got to get that consistency in our gym to be able to do things over and over again the right way. And so you're never great until each individual player can be great at their individual responsibilities by performing it over 
every time. And we have a program where we can go back and watch every contact and every play. So, you know, yesterday I spent a lot of time in front of my computer just watching and going through and, and marking things down on my Excel sheet to show some of the individual players about where we're taking plays off. And, and because it's a two-point switch on every point, yep. you know, you're talking about making two or three different plays. And that, that matches over 3-0. So it, it's not a significant amount, but it's, it's a very important amount in terms of how you function as a team. What do you like most about this team right now? You know, I think there's the ability to get them to be bought in is, is there. Um, I think, you know, they know that they have so much potential in where they can be at. Um, I, I like that they're a little frazzled at times. Uh, you know, you don't want them to be comfortable right now. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, it's not a good thing for me, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a process. And, and you've got to keep revisiting that as a coach. You know, you, coaches, you always want to have the perfect game and you want everything to be running smoothly. But... You get into some character. You know, the thing that I really liked about this team, we were down 22-18 at UTSA the other night. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went on an 8-0 run, and we went, win the game 25-22. Uh, we're down and out against West Virginia. We're 9-4 in a game to 15, and we go on a 12-3 scoring spree. And so I think when they get their mind right about the process, about how we're going about our business and focusing on the process as opposed to individual success, um, then our team comes united and we become really good. So it's getting them that to point, and that's the tough part about this generation is, is getting them to be uh, all in with the process of how do you become a successful team. I, I, I've heard what you just said quoted almost chapter and verse in every other sport right. talking about. So it doesn't really matter the sport, and you, you also use some words I think are key, generation of athletes. This generation of athletes, not say anything bad or good or this or that. It's different, though, isn't it? It's, it's a little bit different than what you were d- dealing with and what coaches were dealing with uh, even several years ago. It's completely different. You know, I think this generation, there's lots of studies now out about the cell phones that we've been studying and kind of how they interact and their ability to kind of – most of these generation kids have never had a job because of the way – there's so much money in the, in the youth sports program. So conflict resolution is, is very difficult. Communication is very difficult. And, you know – there's so much process when they play in club that they can switch clubs and become the superstar and, the, and they've never had to be challenged. So it's a, it's much, I think coaching now is a lot more about managing personalities and managing the team and individual communication skills. That's at least where I'm spending a lot of my time over the last five years. And so it becomes, it can be overwhelming, but it's also fun to kind of get them to grow and see where they are at. And so uh, this generation is, is different, but you know, coaching is, you've got to be flexible of how you go about your business and you got to understand you know what what teams you have and that's where we're at with this generation and so to be successful you've got to have them to be bought in you got to get them to understand what our vision is and so um, that'll be some of the keys that we kind of have to address as the season and future teams come along we were talking about the difficulty of the non-conference schedule but here were some numbers that really stood out about how vastly improved the Big 12 itself is uh, this season. Right now, uh, third in the RPI and a winning percentage of over 61% and just slightly behind the Pac-12 in the Big 10. So playing that customarily not difficult non-conference schedule is one thing, but you've got to grind night in, night out now in this league, don't you? Yeah, I mean, it's going to start off Wednesday night. Baylor is, <laughs> you know, statistically is off the charts right now. They beat BYU uh, in Hawaii to start off the year. It's the same team that basically had us down and out a year ago and uh, the conference is great we need that uh, we've got to be able to perform on a nightly basis we need that stress level to see and learn about our team um, and we'll see what kind of buy-in and when how long we can be good for, for what periods of time because when we're good we're really good for stretches and when we're bad we're, we're not so good but our focus as a team is not so much about how great we can become we just want to be good for long periods of time and if we can be good our good's going to be good enough to to win ball games, and, and it's a, uh, a big week this week with we'll Baylor and Kansas State at home this week. Real big, yeah. Um, th- you know, again, we talk about how good the conference is, but for us right now, it's it's about Baylor, and, and they've got a lot of weapons. Uh, they were injured last year, and they had a great year, um, so they've got some pieces that can definitely hurt you. And so we've got to be bought in, and we've got to be ready to go. And uh, Obviously, being at home is nice, but the bigger crowd we have, the better chance we have to win. And have you noticed, and again, this goes back to that whole thing about, uh, quote-unquote, athletes of this generation, that sort of thing, uh, that they do feed off the crowd. Is that a universal thing that we've seen even uh, that, that encompasses all generations of athletes, that they're still getting the vibe off the home crowd? 
I, I believe they do, but there's also some discussions amongst coaches that playing at home adds more pressure to them. Um, so uh, I have not seen that with our team. I think we played it at, at a pretty good level, but uh, you know this team has not played at home at all. We've had one tournament, so we've been on the road the majority of the time. So this will be nice for us to get back and kind of get in our gym for long periods of time. We'll get two matches uh, for a full week, and we're actually practicing over there today to get used to the gym a little bit more and. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, home crowd advantage is, is big. And we have, I mean, in my opinion, one of the greatest arenas in the country when it's sold out and, and it's rocking. All right. Uh, so this Baylor match, by the way, uh, the, the tank tops being given away with the Jarrett Bitmoji there. Uh, are you looking forward to that? <laughs> I don't know if my head and my, my baldness looks very good on a, on a T-shirt, <laughs> but uh, I know my players and my staff are having fun with it. So I'll roll with it a little bit. All right. It's great to see you as always. Uh, best of luck this week in the two matches with Baylor and Kansas State. Okay. Thank you. Jared Elliott, Texas Volleyball coach stay with us coming up the hottest soccer team in the country and that's up next as Longhorn Weekly continues here on the Longhorn Network and the Longhorn IMG Radio Network